Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and applications. Today we are going to have a 13th lecture. Before going to 13th lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. We spoke about similarity transformation, defective matrices, non-defective matrices, algebraic multiplicity, geometric multiplicity, what are the advantages of diagonalizing a matrix and what are the instances and what are the cases where the matrix can be diagonalizable. We would like to see today some new factorization called a householder factorization. This householder factorization you can find applications in image processing, computer vision, computer aided tomography and many more areas, medical imaging and so on and so forth. See that matrix entries are basically they turn out to be physical outcomes of some realistic situation and these entries they are all actually very minute values in practical. How do you handle the minutely small entries which turns out to be the outcome of the physical situations in realistic world? We have evolved a new method called householder factorization which we also call it as householder reflection with some degree of reflexivity to determine the QR factorization. So ultimately what we wanted to do is we wanted to write the matrix B as a product of two matrices one I call it as a Q another I call it as R. We will see in due course of time what are the forms of Q and R so that when you multiply these two matrices you would be getting a matrix B. Let us start with the matrix consider the matrix X1. So you will have minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 transpose. So when I consider this matrix arbitrarily X1 and what is the norm of X2 to a norm, second norm? square root of minus 1 square, square root of minus 1 square, square root of minus 1 square which turns out to be square root of 3. So I do write this householder as u1 is equal to x1 minus norm of x1 into e1 where e1 is e1 is 1 0 0 u1 is equal to x1 minus norm of x1 multiplied with e1. That will be equivalent to minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus and this norm of x1 is root 3 times of 1, 0, 0. That is root 3 times of 1 0 0. So which is minus 2 1.0000 1.0000 minus of 1.0040s right minus of 1.40s. So this is the form of Q1. Now further when I compute this V1 by using this Householder factorization V1 is nothing but U1 upon norm of U1. Norm of U1 is 2 norm. This is a 2 norm. So, which turns out to be minus of 0 0.8881, 0 0.3251, minus of 0 0.3251. Having had U1, having had V1, now I am ready to compute H1 which is equal to I minus 2 times of V times of V transpose. That is I is known to me 
that is 100010001 that is matrix of order 3 matrix of order 3 so when i compute this h1 it turns out to be this values first column second column third column so having had this h1 now i multiply the h1 with the matrix b then i do end up with this matrix right you see where the entries are actually much more similar it is minus of 0.5771 0.5774 minus of 0.5774 this is 0.5774 0.7887 0.2113 minus of 0 0.5774 0.2113 0.7887. So it turns out to when you multiply with this matrix B, so this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this. Similarly, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with this. So like that, if you do all the calculation, then it turns out to be a matrix called R. So look at this matrix. So this is the main diagonal and this is the sub diagonal and this is the sub diagonal. So this is anyway 0. So this is the form of the matrix R and the form of Q1 is nothing but H1 and this is the main diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the one diagonal, this is the one diagonal. Right? So R1 is actually it is it is analogous to the lower triangular matrix because this element is non-zero, rest below this are zero, this element is non-zero, best below are either zero or non-zero, and this is anyway non-zero. This is the form of R1 and this is the form of Q1. So ultimately the matrix A we wrote it as R1 into Q1. Right? So where the form of R1 is this thing. And the form of Q1 is this thing. Now consider X2. So X2 is 0, right? Then 1.5774, then 0.4226. So when I compute this 2 norm, then it is 0 square. So it is 0 square plus 1.5774 square plus 0.4226 square. So you get this value. So therefore this is the form of x2. This is the form of x2. So further if you compute this u2 is equal to x2 minus norm of x2 into e2 norm of x2 into e2 that is 0 1.5774.4226 minus of 1.6330 multiplied with this matrix that is e2 so e2 is nothing but 0 1 0 then when i multiplied it ultimately i will end up with this matrix that is 0 minus of 0 0.0556 0.4226 this is the form of u2 having had u2 you can find out v2 that is u2 upon norm of u2 that is so when i multiply with this u2 upon norm of v2 i do end up with 0 minus of 0 0.1305 0 0.9914 so having had u1 v1 having had u2 v2 now i could able to compute h2 h2 is nothing but that is i minus 2v times of v transpose. So when I compute this, ultimately I do get up this kind of matrix. This is a 0, this is a 0. Right? So by this process, you will be knowing what you call h1 is known to you. Now h2 is also known to you. Having known h1 and h2, I can write it as h2 r1. That is h2 multiplied with r1. So this is H2 multiplied with R1. So you do get what you call R2. This is the matrix R2. So having R2, you see here, this is the main diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, and this is the entry, this is the entry. 
So Q2 is H1 into H2. So when you multiply this H1, this is the matrix and H2 is the, this is the matrix. So this is the, that's how it goes. So having had H1 and H2, I could able to compute what you call Q2. So with this computation, I would able to come up Q is equal to Q2. That is, this is the main diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, this is the one diagonal. Similarly, this is the main diagonal, this is sub diagonal, sub diagonal. So this is analogous to what you call lower triangular matrix R2. So R2 turns to be lower triangular matrix, Q turns to be a non-zero matrix. So we could able to write B is equal to Q into R. The product of two matrices which we call QR factorization. Okay, so having had the QR factorization, since the coefficient matrix cannot be solvable, we would try to see what are the ways and means to factorize the matrix. So therefore, one of the algorithm is QR factorization. Now further, let us go ahead with the continuation, real square form. What is the square form? How it is useful in matrix computation? Square triangular theorem is, if A is a n by n matrix, if A is a n by n matrix, then there exists a unitary matrix U such that U star AU is equal to T, right? Where U is the unitary matrix. So, if you could able to find out a unitary matrix U such that A star U star AU is equal to T, where T is the triangular matrix with diagonal values lambda 1. So, you get as triangular matrix as you would get all our eigenvalues. So, lambda 1, lambda 2, etc., lambda n like this in the diagonal. So, how do you prove these theorems? The proof is by induction. The proof is by induction. So, we will assume that if n is 1, it is a trivial case because if there is a 1, 1 by 1, so that we would get only one eigenvalue. It is a trivial case. Next, assume that the theorem is true for n is equal to k minus 1 then we will show that it is also true for n is equal to k. Let u be the normalized eigenvector of a associated with the eigenvalue lambda 1. So if you get that, let us quickly define what is u1. u1 is nothing but matrix u, v where v is the k by k minus 1 and unitary matrix. So therefore a matrix is unitary matrix, then u is also happens to be unitary matrix. So I could write this a1 as u1 star multiplied with u a1. So a1 is equal to u1 star multiplied with a times of u1. So which I can write it as diagonal of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. There is a v1 of order k minus 1 such that that is t hat is equal to v1 star times of a hat v is a triangular matrix. Then we do define V2 that is diagonal of 1 V1. We see that U2 is unitary because so is the V1. So after all U2 is computed based on U1. So therefore it is also unitary matrix. So like that you can write it as U2 star A1, A1, A2, U1, A2, U2 is equal to like this. And you can keep on do like this. And you can show that this is a triangular matrix U star is equal to AU. So therefore this is one of the very, very important application of the square theorem. So the conclusion is since a real matrix can have complex eigenvalues, since a real matrix can have complex eigenvalues, even for a real matrix A and U and T is the square theorem, above can be complex. However, we can apply, we can choose U to be real orthogonal if T is replaced by a quasi-triangular matrix or is known as the real square form. So when you talk about the real square form, it is useful in order to find out the triangulation of the matrices. So in order to complete this theorem, let us prove this theorem. Let A be a n by n matrix. This is the n by n matrix. Then there exists a n by n orthogonal matrix Q such that Q transpose AQ is equal to R which I call it as, this is the main diagonal, these are all sub-diagonals. Where all, each Ri is either a scalar or a 2 by 2 matrix, the scalar diagonal entries corresponding to the real eigenvalue matrix 
2 by 2 matrix on the diagonal entries corresponding to the eigen geometries eigen geometries using the conjugate eigen values so by knowing this uh, concepts we could able to find out the solutions to matrices quite easily now let us look at this multiplicity of eigen values how actually these multiplicities would be helpful in order to find out the eigen values so already we spoke in the last lecture there is algebraic multiplicity and there is a geometric multiplicity so if the eigen value is replaced by m times then it is algebraic multiplicity is m the sum of the algebraic multiplicities of the eigen values of n, n by n is matrix m so what is the geometric multiplicity as i spoke the geometric multiplicity is the dimension of another space of m and lambda i that is for every eigen value of a square matrix a the geometric multiplicity is less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity for every eigen value of a square matrix the geometric multiplicity is less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity so that means the matrix will become non defective the matrix a is diagonalizable if and only if geometric multiplicity of every eigen value is equal to the algebraic multiplicity the defective eigen values as already we spoke geometric multiplicity never exceeds algebraic multiplicity eigen value is defective if geometric multiplicity is less than algebraic multiplicity so so eigen value is defective if geometric multiplicity is less than al algebraic multiplicity a matrix is defective if some of the eigen values are defective matrices 0 1 1 1 0 0 -2 3 the character equation is you get this this is the character equation and you do get these values so plus r minus 1 plus r minus 1 plus r minus i so rank of a is 3 and rank of a minus rank of a minus 1 is 3 and rank of a minus 1 i all square is 2 so we solve a minus i y square is equal to 0 y is equal to minus 1 0 1 such that this value should get not equal to 0 now a is equal to this so therefore you do get the matrix the the matrix vector by using household transformation so p is equal to i minus 1 by 12 this is the matrix i do get it for which px is this py is this then we get the household transformation p1 household transformation for p2 so it can be verified that q is equal to p1 p that is this matrix and q transpose a q is equal to this matrix which is actually what we call real square form so we can have a real square form so having had this matrices then we will dwell into what you call unitary matrices how do we define unitary matrices a matrix u belongs to mn is called a unitary matrix if u times of u transpose is equal to i identity matrix if u is a real matrix then u transpose is equal to u star then u is called orthogonal matrix if u is unitary then determinant of u is equal to 1 matrices of reflection rotation are unitary in factorization reflection alone will give you in 3d that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 where the determinant happens to be 1 so rotation along the z axis so this is our rotation along the z axis and if you take the matrix h then the real square form of this so eigen values are these things eigen values one is the real eigen value these are all complex eigen values if the matrix a is symmetric then pap transpose is equal to u it follows immediately that the upper hasenberg matrix is less than symmetric matrix therefore the is orthogonal so how do you apply this algorithm for householder processor so you get input of at the square matrix n by n output is n by n upper heisenberg matrix stored a then for k is equal to 1 to n do determine the vector u this determinant is very very important this is what is called householder householder fraction householder fraction so therefore given a scalar sigma you do write this vector and store sigma as a k plus 1 comma k so compute this b k is equal to 2 by u k transpose update the entries of a through a so ultimately store these equations you will get these things 
So therefore, so what would happen is if you take simple example d by 3, I find it for k is equal to 1, u1 is known to me, sigma is known, a21 is known, b1 is known. So what is the conclusion I can make? So I can make the conclusion that update the matrix A, then ultimately I would end up this matrix C. So this matrix is actually you know the main diagonal, sub diagonal, sub diagonal. So therefore this will helpful in finding out the solution to the equations. So I will stop my lecture over here and thank you very much for listening patiently. Thank you once again.